Hello everyone, my name is Will Hodling, and I am the Managing Director for North America at Minerva, and I am here today to tell you a little bit about our entrepreneurial approach to higher education. Uh, I want to start today with a question. And that question is, what is the most common job in America? So as you're listening to this, just take a moment to think about the most common job in America today. I guess that some of you must have thought about teachers or salespeople. Depending on where you live, if you live in Silicon Valley, you might think about engineers or web developers. The most common job in America, actually unexpectedly, is truck driving, so transportation and logistics. And the reason that I start with this is because of what I did before I worked at Minerva. So I worked for a number of years at Google and YouTube, and I was fortunate enough to take a drive in one of the self-driving cars. So this is a photo of me about three years ago in a Lexus SUV, outside of one of the Lexus SUV, self-driving cars. And I went onto the highway with a friend of mine. All of a sudden, you heard the voice from above say, ready to engage in driverless car. And the driver just spoke back effortlessly, ready to engage. And the system blinked on, the driver took his hands off the wheel, and we drove for about 20 miles on Highway 280, kind of connecting San Francisco to Silicon Valley. It was really an effortless drive. The car would slow down and speed up based on what happened ahead of us. It would move to the left if a truck was passing on the right to give an extra little bit of breathing room. And I had this epiphany while in the car about how much technology would change everything about society. And it's not just about changing truck driving jobs and that most of those jobs will be eliminated, but it's really all facets of our society are going to be changed dramatically because of technology and globalization. They have been already, they'll continue to be changed dramatically. There's a great stat from the U.S. Department of Labor that 65% of today's grade school kids will go on to work in a job that hasn't been invented yet. So as a university, as a new university program, we have a difficult task at hand. We have to prepare students for a world that doesn't exist yet. We need to be conscientious of this rapidly changing landscape, increasingly complex, globally interconnected, more open than ever before, and develop a program that will not just allow students to survive in the future, but really allow them to thrive and to lead and to innovate. So that's what we're doing at Minerva. Minerva was created around five years ago a successful entrepreneur in Silicon Valley, Ben Nelson, who was quickly joined by Stephen Coughlin, our founding dean, who's a former dean of social sciences at Harvard. Bob Carey signed on early on as the, uh, he was former president of the New School in New York and a center and governor from Nebraska. And their approach and their original kind of mission and vision was to create a university that will allow students to thrive in the 21st century and beyond using what we know about how people learn, using what we know about how society is changing and becoming more global, using what we know about how existing institutions have struggled and in many ways failed, particularly on, on issues of cost, to create a better institution, to prepare students to make decisions of consequence, to be the leaders that we want to see in the world. There are kind of four core building blocks, core, four areas of innovation or differentiation in this new university approach. And so today I want to walk through these four core elements that make for a future-proof education. The first is practical knowledge, teaching students the skills and abilities they will use over the course of their life. The second is to teach them those skills and abilities in an engaging classroom environment, a classroom that utilizes the research on how people learn to improve outcomes. Third, we want to do this in a global context be conscientious of the world students are graduating into, the people they'll be interacting with, provide a global experience, and finally we want to do all of this in a way that's as accessible to as broad of an audience as possible. So I'm going to walk through each of these four pillars of innovation at Minerva. So the first pillar of innovation is practical knowledge. What are we going to teach students in university? So there have been these massive surveys of employers where they say that what matters most is not a candidate's, a job candidate's undergraduate degree, the brain of the institution, the specific major they had, but really their ability to think critically, to communicate clearly, and to solve complex problems. We at Minerva 
also looked and we did a research, meta-analyses. We looked at meta-analyses of leaders, innovators, and thought, what are the overlapping skills, abilities that they have that allow them to thrive and lead? And we ultimately came up with these four categories. These four categories, two of them are personal, critical thinking, creative thinking, and two of them are interpersonal, effective communication and effective interaction. And we believe that these core elements need to be the intellectual foundation for the university of the future. This is what really students need to be able to take away from their education. And while most universities understand and recognize and value or, or recognize the importance of these areas, they're not explicitly created to teach these areas. That instead, they'll teach you content and hope that in the process of learning the content, you will almost pick up by osmosis these underlying abilities. So we flip that at Minerva. Freshman year, you take four courses. Every single student takes the same four courses. These are those courses. And those courses are meant to give you the broad intellectual foundation you will need to be successful in any future academic discipline as, any, as well as any professional path. The jobs of the future are unknown, but the skills we need to thrive in those jobs are known. So these are those underlying skills. This is the practical knowledge that we hope to teach students. As you progress academically after your freshman year, you then move into these majors and concentrations that give you more subject area expertise so that you can be, so, so that you can thrive in these additional industries. That we think content expertise does still matter, but it needs to be on top of this intellectual foundation. So freshman year at those four courses, we've actually broken them down subsequently into smaller parts, into about 120 component par par parts that we call HCs, Habits of Mind and Foundational Concepts. So during your freshman year, you'll study, you'll learn, you'll be introduced to these 120 or so HCs. Sophomore through senior year, as you go on through your majors and concentrations, you will be graded both on your understanding of the subject area as well as your application of these underlying intellectual abilities, these HEs, these habits of mind and foundational concepts. Such that by the time you're a senior, you will have a GPA based on your subject area expertise as well as grades demonstrating your mastery of critical thinking, creative thinking, effective communication, and effective interaction. And the thought is that by constantly reinforcing those skills, over the course of four years, they will become automatic such that you can then apply them the rest of your life. And you actually learn to think in a fundamentally different way than you would have if you'd exclusively studied content throughout your four years. So that's what we teach, this practical knowledge, knowledge you can use in the world. Second is how we teach it. We started at Minerva with a blank slate in every category, and we asked ourselves to think, we challenged ourselves to think from first principles about designing the most effective curriculum, the most effective classroom experience, the most effective residential experience. On the classroom side, we looked at decades of research in how people learn. There's been tons of research done on what to show what is effective teaching and learning, yet very little of it is actually implemented in a traditional classroom environment. So what we've done in Minerva is taken that research that says, in, in short, active learning is better than passive learning. The more you actually process information, you practice and are engaged, the more you're going to learn, where you'll retain information as well as develop a fluid intelligence, the ability to think on your feet. And we've built a classroom experience around that. Every single class in Minerva is a small seminar. We don't have any classes that are in a lecture format. All of our students do work ahead of class to learn the material, and then when they come to class, they actually discuss and debate the material, rather than to participate in knowledge dissemination. So every class is less than 19 students to a professor, where students do advanced work like a flipped classroom, and they come into class ready to prepare to discuss and debate it. All of our classes are taught on your computer. So this is a screenshot of what a class of Minerva looks like. We can organize the screen in many different ways. You can have different grids of students. You can have anything from the desktop pulled in, whether that's a PowerPoint presentation, a, a, um, any kind of document, music, video, simulations, et cetera. 
At the top here, you can see all the students are color-coded, yellow, red, and green. And that is a decision support tool. This is the professor's view. It's the decision support tool we built for our professors so they can more accurately call on students to distribute conversation equally. So in this environment, we have a number of tools like this, like this decision support tool, that help professors more effectively teach. And then we also have a number of tools like polls, breakout groups, um, and others that ensure that students can effectively learn. Because that's really the goal of this classroom environment, so to, to maximize the learning potential for our students, the learning outcomes for our students. The active learning in class is combined with active learning out of class. This is the post-class experience where a student can go back and actually rewatch what he or she said in class and practice deliberately for the next class time period. So here you can see a student, Guillaume, from our founding class, and he can actually see Guillaume spoke for seven seconds, Guillaume spoke for 18 seconds, Guillaume typed a comment. All of those moments will be tagged to one of our learning objectives and graded on a set rubric. So that Jill, after class, can continue that active learning process by evaluating his own performance, and they can improve in time for the next class. This is not just for one period, but it really strings over the course of all four years. So the student, you can see on these 120 learning objectives, you can see yourself improving over time, such that when you graduate, you can actually see kind of a full trajectory of four years of intellectual growth on each of these different characteristics. So it allows for a level of active learning that is impossible elsewhere because we can tie, we can really scaffold learning across classes, and we can give students very clear feedback. In addition to the in-class experience, students are also learning from the cities they live in. So students take classes Monday through Thursday, and on Friday they participate in co-curriculars and location-based assignments, which are in-person, experiential learning opportunities that take the curriculum and help demonstrate why it matters in the real world, how these skills actually apply in the real world, and also expand students' worldview, understanding of themselves, understanding of their surrounding, to help them better determine their professional and personal path in life. So experiential learning combined with the act of learning in class. So the third building block in Minerva is the global experience. Students are graduating into an increasingly interconnected world, and they, we want them to really understand what different places and problems and people are like, rather than just living in an existing bubble. So most college campuses in the United States are overwhelmingly American. 90% of students at Ivy League schools come from within the United States, and across the country, only about 2% of college students study abroad. Minerva is almost the opposite. So Minerva students, you spend freshman year living in San Francisco, and then sophomore through senior year, you'll spend one semester each living in a different city around the world. So sophomore year, you're in Berlin and then Buenos Aires. Junior year, you're in Bangalore and Seoul. And senior year, you'll be in Istanbul and London. So seven cities over the course of your four years. You will travel with a cohort of fellow Minerva students. You'll live in Minerva residence halls in these locations, so you'll have that nice, tight-knit college community. But you'll do so in these different environments around the world and really use the city as your campus. We don't have a traditional campus apparatus insofar as we don't have gyms or coffee shops or cafeterias or anything along those lines. Instead, our students use the city as their campus, and we have people in these areas who live with our students who help connect them to the city. And we help connect them to the city because the city offers incredible opportunities for immersion that you just can't get in a traditional college environment. So we'll utilize what each city does best. We'll create specific experiential learning immersion programming around those cities' expertises so that students can really get a broad understanding, a broad global understanding by the time they graduate. The final piece that makes Minerva quite different, much more entrepreneurial than most institutions, is our accessibility. 
So we view accessibility in a couple of different ways. First is just the cost. The cost of college has been rising dramatically over the course of the last 30 years. It shows really very little sign of stopping. So what we've done in Minerva is we've really stripped the education down and thought about what are the core parts of education that are worth investing in, the, the, the professors and the, the curriculum and the classroom experience. And we provided an educational experience that is more rigorous, more challenging than most institutions. It costs only $10,000 per year in tuition. Students will obviously have to sleep and eat, so it's about $30,000 total, inclusive of room, board, books, travel, etc. $30,000 per year total. It's a four-year program. It's a four-year accredited program. We have extensive financial aid. So we offer financial aid identically to domestic and international students. It's fully need blind and we meet full financial needs. It's quite a different financial uh, um, uh, opportunity that than many colleges that don't offer international financial aid. And then finally, we have a meritocratic admissions process. We look for students who are independent-minded, self-starters, who are strong academically, who have leadership creativity, an initiative, and who will thrive in this global environment. They're uniquely mature at age 18, 19 to take on this serious, this challenge of living and learning around the world. As a result of our meritocratic admissions process, our accessible tuition and our extensive financial aid, we have a far more diverse student body than almost any other American university. I think it's the most diverse university in the country, a university program. We have 80% of our students about come from outside the United States. So we currently have our freshman class living in San Francisco. We have 110 freshmen. They come from over 35 different countries. Next year, we expect to grow by around 50%. So a class that's, you know, that's largely we expect also to have a similar international diversity. 